All right, hello again, everyone. Today I'm just going to show you a little quick trick that I learned on how to make quick decals for uh, dirt stains. You can use it for graffiti. You can use it for anything, and just put it onto well, like wooden textures or any model that you want. Um, this is quicker than texturing. However, texture. It's quicker than texturing it on. This is quicker than unwrapping UVs. This is quicker than projection mapping it on. However, there on the only bad thing about it is that it needs to be on a flat surface against a flat surface. So first, what we're going to do is create the flat surface for it. So we're just going to make a plane and zero it out. And this plane, I'm going to square off because I like to have a square plane. So we'll make it 100 by 100. And we don't need any length through it segment. So right click on these sliders to turn it down to zero. So next what I'm going to do is start making my materials. So hit M to bring up the material editor. And we'll just use a standard material. So right click on your material. Right click and then go material standard. Double click on this material in here. And we'll set the diffuse color by clicking on this node right here. And hitting bitmap. Next what we'll go to is the folder that I have my textures in. These will be available for download. I'll probably throw them up in a Ninja album because they're the easiest thing to do. And I will select the material and attach it to the geometry and viewport. And if you want to see the material and viewport, just click that button. So right now we just have a basic wood texture. Now this can be any texture you want. Um, the mask and the material and the dirt material that I'll be putting on top of it. You can replace those with your own materials. This is just for purposes that I will make these ones. So next, what I will be doing is I will show you the dirt, how to make the dirt material. So this will be your model that you have, and then you want to put a decal on it. Next, what you want to do is create another plane that will hold your decal. So we'll create a plane, and we'll make this one about 30 by 30. So it's pretty small. Bring it up. And first what we want to do is go under object properties, so right click object properties, we will not cast shadows. We will receive shadows though. So as you can see now we'll not cast shadows. However the reason we receive shadows is, I'll show you a bit later, but if we didn't receive shadows, anything that would go on top of this would not have any shadows and it would look kind of awkward. So we went object properties and turned off receive shadows, it looks awkward. So we'll turn that back on, receive shadows. Leave off the box for demonstration purposes. And now we will make the material for this. So go under M for material editor. And under materials, we will create a standard material. Double click on it and bring it up. And this we will use the opacity map slot under maps here. Opacity. And we'll click none. And we'll bring in a bitmap. So the opacity map slot, I have it saved as a targa, is a black and white map that what it means is the white can be 100 and the black, so the white is 100 or drawn on, and the black is 0 or drawn off. So as you can see in here, wherever it was black, there is no texture left anymore. I'll zoom in on a bit more so you can see a better look. But this is just a gray material that you have in your diffuse color. So what we can do is move these down a bit so I can get to my diffuse color. Click and drag on diffuse color, bring out the bitmap, and I want all formats, dirt. For best uh, for best results, I guess, usually I use just a black and white material map. You can use other colors. It won't work right. It just takes the black and white information. So it's, yeah, just use black and white. Don't use anything else. But what it does is it paints on, wherever it's white, it paints on the texture, as you can see in the back right there. And wherever it's black, it has no texture, or the texture amount is zero, or the opacity is zero. And where it's white, opacity is 100. So next what we're going to do is apply this to our material. Apply it to material and show it in viewport. As you can see, there is dirt, if I minimize this, everywhere except in that little hole. Now what we really want to do is kind of invert this. Now the problem with inverting is it doesn't show up in the viewport. So what we will do is double click on here. But we only want to invert the mask. So we double click on our bitmap here and under output we invert. As you can see, it changes in here. It doesn't change our viewport because it just doesn't like updating it properly I guess. My, that might be my viewport but it hasn't worked for me ever. So as you can see now where it was white it has 100% opacity and where it's black. That's why that's because this invert in output, the output color 
is inverted. So the whites become blacks, the blacks become white, and therefore where it was 100% is now 0% in the backs, and where it's 0% is now 100%. So we're going to minimize this, and then we're going to align this to here. Now I could align it by snapping it down, snapping it down like that, but I don't want to do that. What I want to do is hit my quick align tool, so right here. If you don't see quick align, hold down, and then you'll see this one with the little, I don't know, lightning bolt there, and you would click on here. Now it's quickly aligned to that. What I want to do now is offset it just a touch, because if I render this out now, you'll see some interdependence, not interdependence, you'll see some uh, artifacts because these two are in the exact same plane. So I'm going to move it up very slightly in the Z, so point, point zero zero 0.001. Can, can't even tell, but you can tell. Oh, now I just moved it down because I scroll wheeled out 001. And click away to make sure that I don't scroll wheel out again. And as you can tell, it is just on top of it. So we're going to select it again and move it to wherever we want our dirt stain. So right about there. Now we'll hit F9 to render. As you can see, we have a little dirt stain on our wood. This can be used for many different things like textures for decals, uh, printed words, decals on app models, and it's an easy alternative to actually unwrapping the entire model and finding out where it is in the model and unwrapping or and then texturing it itself and then putting it back on. It's just a much simpler way to want if you want to add some inconsistencies or some breaking up of an object. As you can see, if we didn't have cast shadows on, I'm going to create a box to show this, or if we didn't have receive shadows on, we see now that it shows a shadow down there, and this has no light in it, so I can't see. But as you can see, there's a shadow down there like that. If we had cache or receive shadows off, I will right-click, object properties, receive shadows. You can see that it looks kind of awkward, where it's not getting any shadows, but the rest of it is. So just make sure you have receive shadows on, and there you go. Quick little way to create decals. And it'll allow you to break up your models quite easily, have a little bit of dirt or graffiti in there. Usually I find it good for when you're making a wall for a school or something, or a wall for a underground like concrete wall and you want some graffiti on it, you just make a graffiti mask, mask it on, and there it is. So I hope you enjoy and I hope you learned something new on how to create a decal for objects in 3ds Max using the opacity mask. Cheers.